to part five of our active learning series, building your own interactive lesson with Google Slides. So this is a culmination of part one, two, three, four, and five of our active learning series to really take a number of strategies as well as accessibility features, as well as add-ons to incorporate into our lessons through Google Slides or Pear Deck or Nearpod. So let's jump into this. And really the objective for today and for this training is for you to review all of our active learning slideshows and lessons so that then you can create your own interactive slideshow for your class using the resources and trainings provided as that framework. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to go review part one, two, three, and four of the active learning series. You're going to begin thinking about how are you going to build your interactive slides through that review. Then you're going to go to uh, a number of templates here. Go to slides, uh, slidesmania.com. And what you're going to do is find a template that you want to use to create your interactive slideshow and then incorporate the elements and strategies that we've covered in this series into that lesson. Then at the very end of you doing this, I would like you to share with me the slideshow that you've developed and then we can share it with your colleagues at your school site and possibly around the net in our consortium. So I'm going to just talk real quickly about each of these slideshows that we discussed over the course of this semester and this professional learning series so that uh, you can then just jump into it and build your own slideshow and lesson for your class. And just remember, this is all on our education and career ETCN EdTech website. Please make sure you bookmark that and you'll find all of these trainings as well as materials and templates. So our first training was part one and that was the basics of Google Slides, creating hyper slides, as well as creating agendas using hyperlinks, um, using templates like Slides Mania, looking at the structures of a lesson with interactive slides, and then really just the basics of creating your own basic Google slideshow presentation. And you can incorporate those resources into your presentation. And then the second one is making your Google slideshow um, accessible for all students. So that relates to incorporating voice, uh, so audio into your slides and also video. And we talk about that here in this slideshow presentation. And you talk about um, really incorporating Moat as a good integration that is in the Google Place, uh, Google Slide add-on store. And Moat can be also integrated into any of the Google Workspace products. And then incorporating, we also looked at YouTube and putting those videos into our slideshows. And then we talked about Loom here, as well as another integration along with Moat to incorporate videos into our slideshows. And then we talked about Frere vocabulary and how you can use a template like this to help uh, provide students with vocabulary, as well as create a multimodal instructional sequence for them to demonstrate their knowledge and to conduct active learning. After part two, we covered part three, and that was incorporating the add-ons of Pear Deck and Nearpod. And essentially in this lesson, we learned how to add the Pear Deck and Nearpod add-on and how to start building our lessons with these interactive slide opportunities. So this slideshow discusses how that is done and provides the resources of how to do that. And those are also found on our ETCN EdTech website showing all four steps for each of these slide add-ons to then incorporate into your own lesson. So that was something that uh, can really 
amplify student learning. And what we did is took it a step further in part four, which is incorporating a strategy called think, write, pair, share, which can be incorporated and integrated into a Google slideshow presentation, as well as Pear Deck or Nearpod. So in this, we learned how to incorporate a strategy that we all know how to do uh, in person and online with breakout rooms, but incorporating Google Slides or Pear Deck or Nearpod. So we learned how to integrate that strategy here. And you can view that sequence of how that works on part four. We also incorporated how to break it down and, and do it in a collaborative fashion as well in a group. And that essentially is our review of part one, two, three, four of our active learning series. I also incorporated some more resources. So on our ETC and EdTech website, we have 10 strategies using Pear Deck, which is a uh, powerful training that I developed that can incorporate a lot of different strategies, including the pair share and notice wonder and among others. So this is 10 really good strategies that you can incorporate into your interactive slides here in that there's a video displaying that as well. Also training, building a lesson with Nearpod. You can access that here as well on this slideshow. So really, the next step, as I discussed at the beginning of this, is that go to Slides Mania and find a template that you want to use for your lesson. Do some backwards design and determine what you want your lesson to be about. Then make a copy of the template and then build out a future lesson. Then review the content and go through part one, two, three, and four and determine, do you want to just make this a Google Slideshow presentation with these strategies and accessibility features? Or do you want to go with Pear Deck or Nearpod to integrate more of these active learning opportunities. Then after you're done, I would like you to share it with me. Share it with me and I can share it with the community and feature it on our Around the Net as well as our uh, ETC and EdTech website. So there's a lot of things that you can do here and a lot of resources for you. Think less is more when it comes to this. You don't need to make a slideshow more than probably about four to eight slides in length for a synchronous class, whether you're online or in person. And these are opportunities just for your students to be actively learning throughout parts of the lesson. So I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you can check this out. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your week whenever you're viewing this. I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you so much.